Hi, good day to all. My name is Felicia Tan, the Product Manager for Fortinet. And together with me is my colleague, Zhisheng, who is the Solution Architect. Today, we will be talking about Fortinet's Secure SD1. So this is the agenda for today. First, I'll be doing an introduction of Fortinet, after which I'll be sharing about the current landscape of SD1, challenges, and the solution these challenges to these challenges. Zhisheng will then be showing the demo of Fortinet's Secure SD1. So the Fortinet platform consists of four key components. The Zero Trust Access Network, which enables identification of all users, applications, and devices on and off the network. At the core of the platform is the network, which remains a critical piece. The security-driven networking provides secure high-performance connectivity between users, applications, and devices into the cloud. It can manage internal and external risk with internal segmentation, threat detection, and automated threat protection and policy enforcement. The dynamic cloud security provides protection across all cloud environments, including hybrid, public, and private cloud. The cloud security solutions, including virtual appliances and hosted solutions, extend the core cap capabilities of the Fortinet Secure Fabric platform to provide businesses with the same level of cybersecurity and threat intelligence in and across cloud environments that they receive on their physical networks. AI-driven security operations provide faster response and remediation, including actionable customized threat intelligence and insights. The Fabric Management Center provides a single pane of glass, simplifying operations and enabling automation of workflows. The current market trends for one edge infrastructure is as such. A lot of people are moving towards flexible and cost-effective bandwidth rather than using the traditional NPLS, which are less efficient and more costly. As we advance, there are more users for cloud application rather than just internet surfing. The legacy routers do, do not provide visibility to business level application. All the traffic is going towards the NPLS and back to the cloud. With the lack of visibility, the user experience continues to suffer. Hence, people are moving out from legacy router to SD1 to support cloud application. With the improvement of legacy router to SD1, there is also a need to improve security. Hence, we implement Secure Access Service, service H. With the Secure SD1, we can have direct access to the cloud without having to worry about security breach. As we move forward with technology, we aim to improve user experience by moving away from manual configuration to AI, where we use automation to provide touchless user experience. The current market trend for one edge infrastructure poses a challenge to the legacy one infrastructure users. Firstly, legacy routers are complex and there will be still a lot of manual operations. Remote site workers find it challenging to connect to the network. We are looking for ways to improve the operational effectiveness of the networking team because studies have shown that more than 70% of organizations still rely on command line driven configurations and management of their routing infrastructure. Secondly, poor user experience due to the lack of visibility to business app level application. Thirdly, despite paying high costs for their one infrastructure, Many organizations still struggle with providing good user experience to the end users. And one of the reasons is due to the fundamental change in their network architecture because of increased multi-cloud and SaaS adoption. Lastly, organizations need direct internet access to benefit from cloud adoption, and security will continue to be a concern. So at one end, SD1 promises to simplify the way we operate. This simplification must bring us benefits like a reduction in total cost of ownership through easier management. 
This means an increase in productivity of our network managers. But we cannot sacrifice quality with TCO reduction. We want to strive for better user experience so that it eventually can translate to a better productivity to the organization. And of course, secure connectivity to the cloud is a must too. So simplic simplification and functionality has to come hand in hand and it is realized in the secure SD1 technology that Fortinet pioneered three years ago. Fortinet Secure SD1 provides the answer to all the challenges we have mentioned. One of Fortinet's pioneering innovation in the field of Secure SD1 is the SOC4 ASIC, which was unveiled last year. This, in addition to the other patents in SD1-related innovations, have benefited our customer globally and is widely recognized by the industry and market analysts. And 2019 saw Fortinet leapfrogging the competition to take top three seats in the SD1 market in terms of revenue. In Southeast Asia and Hong Kong region, we have also seen huge take-ups with more than 200 customers in the last one year. This drove our revenue growth from SD1 by more than 44 times last year. Our customers have also given us great reviews and testimonies, with Fortinet being named a 2020 Gartner Peer Insight Customer's Choice for One Edge Infrastructure. Thank you for your kind attention. I'll be passing on to Chishan for the demo. Uh, thank, thank you, Felicia. So I'll be taking on from here on the SD WAN demo. So as we know, for SD WAN demo, uh, it's part of the FortiGet solution, so which you can find in the network uh, SD WAN. Uh, I will do a quick overview on how the demo works. Uh, in the SD WAN, we are divided into SD WAN zone, SD WAN rules, and performance SLA. All right, for the SD WAN zone is where you create a zone or interface that adding in the internet that you have within your environment. So this is an example that we have the internet line, the MPRS line, and a 4G LTE line that is connected to the network, including two VPN tunnel to two different data centers, which all can be added in to the SD-WAN. Uh, with this, you could use the SD-WAN rules to create different traffic to go to different uh, network. All right, so from here, you can see that for the first rule, for all OV665 uh, access, all right, you can go through the members of the internet, the MPRS line or the LTE with the tick uh, shows on the member area to show that that will be the priority or the preference for the traffic to go through. Uh, from here, you can see that there is criteria that is given out for interviews to see that based on which condition the traffic will flow through which internet connection. Uh, you can do as well for the voice over IP that is going through back to the DC, which is the HQ. All right. And since for the Dropbox, the same as the Office 5, you can go through the internet, the MPS link, and the LTE, right, so far and so on. So into individual rules itself, you can set the source IP, or you can, in, can just limit to which user have the right to access, all right, and also based on the user group. All right, the destination can be based on the IP address, the internet service, such as uh, the O365, or any type of services that you can find in Fortinet. So these are the list of services that is supported that you can add in to define your traffic destination. All right. For the outgoing interface, you could choose on the condition of the menu assigning which are the outgoing interface uh, or based on the best quality or can be done via the, via the uh, SLA or even based on the bandwidth of the internet. So and adding in the internet interface. All right, on the SLA portion, uh, this is something that I will go through later on is on the performance SLA that you can define that how you how you're able to measure the SLA. And lastly, you can see from here that this is a new function from version 6.4.3 that uh, we can base on latency, jitter, packet loss, downstream upstream bandwidth, or you can create a customized profile for the criteria. All right, so we'll go to the performance SLA, which we talk about how we define the latency packet loss or jitter. 
So from here, you can create um, based on individual application that you look, that you are directing to. All right. So I'll give an example like for the Office 365. So you can put in the participating members that which are the members that is going to check for the uh, SLA. All right. You can set the threshold for the SLA on latency, jitter, or even packet loss. So from this screen, you're able to see is that, example in O365, it will tell you that how much packet loss has been detected from both of the link, all right? And also what is the latency level, and also what is the uh, uh, jittering level. All right, so this will help you to define your sd wan rules that which are the preferred or which are the uh, connection that the traffic will be going through. All right, this helps to improve the uh, SLA and also improve the quality of your application that's going through the internet or even going internally to your data center. So for the data center portion, you can see that we understand that some of the voice is only uh, communicated with it internally, where you can set based on the uh, SLA manage ma management by the Google ping. All right, and criteria, you can create a new criteria and the number of uh, uh, weight that you can put on your jitter latency or even your packet loss. All right, so next I'll go through a quick on the um, packet shipping. All right, under the security profile, uh, so under the policy, you're able to find the traffic shippers, all right, where you can define on different application or different services that you require to do some packet shipping. All right, from here you can put it out as a limit the number of bandwidth um, the services can be used. So I'll give you an example for this uh, FTP connection. You can do the maximum bandwidth that you can use, or you can give a guaranteed bandwidth to provide uh, SLA performance or QoS for your application. All right, this helps to improve uh, critical application or critical services to have the guaranteed bandwidth instead of giving uh, uh, SLA to those non uh, uh, traf uh, individual traffic or for non-critical uh, traffic. All right, from there you can create your own policy. All right, to allow or not to allow such uh, uh, traffic shipping. So lastly, from here you can see that uh, from the dashboard itself, we have an overview on the SD WAN portion. We show you that what are the link connection right now and what's the session that's being used based on the existing WAN, uh, WAN link. So from here, you can see that most of the traffic is going through the WAN one. The number of session is being captured. Number of uh, traffic is, bandwidth is being used for upload and download. And from here, you're able to monitor the status of your link. And is there any packet loss, any latency or any digital in your network? Right, so, so there's the part for the SDUN portion. So since for the SDUN, we also cover the security portion. So what do we mean by security portion in the sense that for SDUN rules only allow a uh, certain traffic to go through certain network. All right, for the Office 365 example, but it does not stated here on the security portion, which other SDUN have the same. So what we does have is that on this policy itself, Right. You can create from your local network that's going through the SD WAN connection. Right. And on the security profile, you can set that to allow uh, to enable antivirus uh, web filtering, application control, and even IPS. So which this is providing the security portion on the SD WAN and to protect internal network from the uh, from the cloud application or from the internet. All right, so that's all for the SD WAN that I have for you today. All right, so I'll go a quick summary on the demo that we we'll go through just now. So on the SD WAN portion, uh, we have the SD WAN zone where you uh, create and add in the network that you have under the SD WAN zone. All right, SD WAN rules that you create rules to define that certain traffic, certain application to use uh, different criteria of latency 
and which are the uh, internet interface that they're going to. All right, from there you create performance SLA to define that how you determine the uh, SLA level via the packet loss, uh, jitter, or even latency. All right, that's next will be traffic safer, which help you to define guarantee on your bandwidth for certain traffic, which is to provide uh, uh, better SLA. And then lastly is on the SDRAM monitor, which provide you an overview on what is your health status of your WAN link and what should you uh, take note of. All right, so that's all for us today. So uh, thank you guys for joining this session. All right, thank you. Thank you.